Welcome back to The Morning Show here on Arise News. I'm Ruben Abati. Joining us now from our Abuja studio to talk about the main opposition party, the People's Democratic Party's 2019 election strategy, the controversy surrounding the choice of Peter Obi as former Vice President Atiku Abubakar's running mate, and so much more, is PDP spokesperson Kola Ologbondinyo. Kola, welcome to The Morning Show. Good morning, Dr. Abati. Morning, morning. Thank you very much. Good We've morning. been expecting you. We've been waiting for you. All yeah, right, good. I can see you on the screen. Right, uh, yeah. Kola, well, first let me uh, yeah. congratulate your party uh, on the success of the uh, process in Port Harcourt. Uh, but since then, there have been issues, particularly with uh, the choice of the, uh, of the uh, running mate by uh, your candidate, Alaji Atiku Abubakar. Uh, what steps are you taking to resolve this? Because you also need uh, the Igbo elite to buy into the, that choice and to have their, you know, uh, their support. Well, thank you, Dr. Ruben Abati. Uh, in real sense of it, there's truly no issues. What we had, just like we had in the case of going to Porakot for the national convention, we are concerned. And in this very circumstance, in respect of the appointment of Governor Peter Obi, as the running mate and vice presidential candidate of our party, we are concerned by the, the governors of the Southeast and the leaders of the Southeast that they were not consulted. And this is being managed. Uh, as we speak, our vice presidential, the vice presidential candidate of our party is uh, Peter Obi, and whatever concerns that are being raised will be thoroughly discussed at the party level. And at the end of it, we're going to have a solid group uh, candidate uh, uh, candidate of Atiku Abubakar whose experience in politics and his political sagacity cannot be put to doubt by any Nigerian and we will be joined by Governor Peter Obi whose economic wizardry is needed at this critical time life of our nation well we've had uh, you know some of the governors in the southeast just saying that they were not consulted as if they have a vote in the matter. Uh, but you, you talked about concerns. What are those concerns, specifically, beyond though they didn't consult us? No, is it that they will no, have preferred somebody else? concerns essentially about consult. No, they have not said that. And if you, if you look at the meeting that they had over the weekend in Enugu, they came up and said that the problem is not the choice of candidate. It's just about consultation. And this is necessary in every political environment. So, and the party has stepped in, the party is managing the situation. We do not want the ruling government to, as usual, try to use that to divide us or cause disaffection among our ranks. And that's why, essentially, the party has moved in quickly. And in a couple of days, I think this issue will be behind us. The presidency has uh, issued uh, a statement, a travel ban, on about uh, 50 high-profile Nigerians or even more and your party has uh, issued a statement condemning that. But there are persons who are saying that an executive order is not in itself a bad thing, uh, but that this particular order seems to be targeted at the opposition, particularly members of the PDP. What's your position as a party? Uh, the position of the People's Democratic Party is that for you, Dr. Abati, you've been around in the political environment, and if you compare this executive order to Decree 2 of 1984, there is truly little or no difference. This is an attempt to foist fascism, autocracy, on our democratic setting. And the People's Democratic Party has totally rejected that executive order, and the, the ruling government is banking on the pronouncement of the Federal High Court. We are going ahead. And we're going to appeal, we will ensure that that judgment is appealed. Because this is a deliberate effort by the ruling government to silence the opposition, to fight those whom they perceive are the enemies of this administration, to engage religious leaders and even traditional rulers and the business community who have seen through the administration of President Muhammadu Buhari and have discovered that it has nothing and virtually nothing to offer our nation. And as such, they have taken the decision to rally with the People's Democratic Party and bring back a government that will ameliorate the sufferings of Nigerians, a government that has already 
created the platform or the people that will be governing Nigeria effective from May 29, 2019. And expectedly, this will not go down well with the ruling government, particularly the Buhari presidency. And they are doing everything to truncate the will and the desires of Nigeria. Well, you mentioned religious leaders, and I find that uh, interesting because President Buhari has uh, only a few days ago said, look, religious leaders should stay away from politics, partisan politics, that is, and allow politicians to do their own thing. Uh, does the PDP agree with him that religious leaders should just stay out of this matter? You see, Buhari presidency is too pretentious. And I say so because three and a half years ago, four years ago, as the candidate of the APC, President Buhari was attending every religious setting. He was found everywhere. And he got, his party secured the support of the redeemed Christian Church of God. And as we speak today, the vice president, Yemi Oshibanjo, is a pastor of the redeemed Christian Church of God. So why the pretense? Is he saying that religious leaders are not members, are not Nigerians? Is the Buhari presidency so trying to suggest that we can operate without religious leaders? The truth of the matter is that the government and the administration of President Muhammad Buhari has absolutely nothing to offer Nigerians. And they are looking for every means to ensure that Nigerians do not rally with a reposition, the reform, the rebranded People's Democratic Party to create a new governance that will solve the problems that the Buhari presidency has created. Well, I mean, I, I think maybe you should try to understand what President Buhari is saying. Uh, he is saying that, look, his government is fighting corruption and that the PDP is a nest of uh, corrupt persons. Uh, it's, a, it's a gathering of persons who cannot even travel to the United States, uh, a gathering of looters, a gathering of uh, people whose integrity is questionable. Maybe what he's saying is that, look, religious leaders should just stay apart so that they don't get corrupted, particularly by members of the PDP. Well, the religious leader that I reference in this uh, statement understands Nigeria and even know Nigerians better than President Muhammad Buhari. And it's a statement of fact that President Muhammad Buhari is not fighting corruption. He's only fighting the People's Democratic Party and perceived enemies or opponents of his government. President Muhammad Buhari cannot claim to be fighting, they cannot claim his administration is fighting corruption. Whereas his former secretary to the government of the federation was alleged to have cut grass with over 200 million naira. And up to today, he was just removed from office and his cousin brought him to replace him. Our Nigerians have had nothing of that. There are several sleazes in the petroleum sector which is under the direct supervision of President Mohamed Buhari. Not one investigation has been carried out. Mena, who was alleged to have taken billions of naira, was removed from office. As a matter of fact, he became a fugitive of the law by taking to his feet and running out of the country. Today, he's not only back to the country, he was reabsorbed into the, into the system, and as we speak, is a candidate of the All Progressives Congress. The factional chairman of APC, and I speak to Adam Sushiomole, has a case, a petition in EFCC. EFCC refused to investigate him. Pastor Oche, a Nigerian from Edo State, where Adam Sushiomole comes from, is in court seeking mandamus to compel EFCC to, invest, to carry out investigation. Funningly, the wife of Mr. President, Aisha, is in tango with his ADC, ADCAM, over alleged corrupt money in the region of 2.5 billion naira. All these logs are in the eyes of the Buhari presidency. They haven't done anything to cleanse their logs in their eyes. They are coming to condemn the People's Democratic Party, who, while in government, did not only arrest, investigated, and caused to be prosecuted 
his own governors, his own ministers, his own senate president, and whatever. And as a matter of fact, all the institutions that are being used to fight corruption today were established under the governance of the People's Democratic Party. Since President Muhammad Buhari was elected into office in 2015, he has not shown any demonstrable effort, either within his government or outside of it, to fight corruption. So he's only mouthing to, come, to try to get the international community to be in his support that is fighting corruption. The average Nigerian on the street of Lagos, Porakot, Abuja, Kano, or wherever, knows the fact that President Muhammadu Buhari's administration is not fighting any corruption. Rather, it is in a struggle to demean, to discredit the opposition party well, and ensure a self-succession plot of being the candidate of his party. Well, somebody who is uh, watching you and listening to you will say, well, you are doing your job. We had uh, Festus Keyamo here, who is the spokesperson of the uh, President Buhari campaign organization. And he painted a different <laughs> you know, picture, a picture that you know, uh, does not promote uh, the PDP. But the PDP, all of a sudden, seems to have bounced back. What is the uh, strategy for making sure that you win? Because I don't see a strategy out there. I just see you know, people just making statements. What was the strategy? The strategy is the Nigerians. The People's Democratic Party before now could be considered an elitist political party. But as we speak today, the People's Democratic Party is on the side of the people. The People's Democratic Party is on the streets of Nigeria to make demand on behalf of Nigerians in respect of good governance. And as such, the leaders of our nation, and when I speak about the leaders of our nation, those who split their blood to keep our nation one. And I speak to people, respectable Nigerians, like President Olusha Gombasonjo, like General T. Y. Dan Juma, like pres former military president Ibrahim Babangida, and many of them in that culture and in that tradition have seen to the end of this administration. President Muhammad Buhari was brought into governance to come and help the cause of Nigeria. But it is clear and manifestly so to every Nigerian today that President Muhammad Buhari has nothing to offer our nation. And as such, Nigerians are today rallying with the People's Democratic Party to make sure that having rebranded, having reformed, having repositioned, and having been able to convince the majority of Nigerians that if it is returned back to power, it will do things differently from the system that was used in the time past. Nigerians have no why, choice why, why, than to rally Why the should people. Nigerians trust the PDP? And, and electoral, and, and Nigerians, Nigerians have, or, they have already pulled, returned their trust in the People's Democratic Party because under the current leadership with Prince Uche Secondus, we have done things differently. We have heard, the issue was about imposition essentially, but we have heard two primaries in state go, for, state go, for state gubernatorial candidates, and we have done it perfectly well. In Porakot, a, few, a couple of weeks back, we had a presidential primary, which was adjudged by majority of Nigerians, and even members of the international community that, was, that were present, that this is, one of the, this is the best electoral process that have been witnessed in the political history of Nigeria. So the People's Democratic Party is doing things differently, whereas the APC, because it is not inorganic, have an issue, because it has no capacity to unite as a political party, has gone to take the worst form of every allegation that the PDP has been accused of. So Nigerians have been able to wait to have an option. They have weighed the, the, PDP, they have weighed the PDP, and they have weighed the APC too, and they have discovered clearly that it is better than they stick to the People's Democratic Party. Well, earlier on, you, ref you referred to uh, former President uh, Olusegun Obasanjo, and he had a meeting with the leadership of your party and with your presidential candidate, Alaji Atiku Abubakar, a few days ago, and publicly uh, endorsed him. Um, what is the story behind the story? Are we likely to see President Obasanjo uh, returning to the PDP? President Olusha Gumbasanjo is an elder statesman. And 
I tell people always, even in private discussions, that one thing that you cannot take away from President Bishop of Basanjo is his passion and love for this country. There are those who hold contrary opinion. But I have watched President of Basanjo, even as a reporter in the presidential villa, I have watched him closely, and I have seen that this is a man who truly loves this nation. And as such, whether in PDP or out of PDP, President Richard Gombasonjo has arrived at a conviction that Nigeria has no headway under a president who will go around the world and demarket his country. Under a president who will have the opportunity of visiting the United States of America, since that has become the, 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 the parameter of, a, of, a, of becoming a president, other man, President Mahmoud Buhari, who go to America and refused to sell his own country and rather went and bought what the America had to offer him without trying to convince America and say, look, we also have agricultural products too. And many issues like that around the presidency of President Muhammad Buhari, it is clear to everybody, and manifestly so, like I said earlier on, that this presidency have no plan. This presidency has no dream. This presidency has nothing and absolutely nothing to take us out of the woods. Rather, the only capacity that the president, Buhari presidency has is to sink us further into an abyss. Well, Kola Logbodi, I've been listening to you. Uh, have you uh, started the campaign? Because some of the things you are saying, you sound like the campaign has already started, even when the uh, INEC has not blown the whistle. Well, we are here to start the campaign, but the campaign by itself is manifest among Nigerians. And you can see the campaign in the realm of the hunger that Nigerians are going to. You can find the campaign in the realm of very low purchasing power of Nigerians, the kind that was not witnessed in the history of our country until President Muhammad Buhari came to power between 1983 and 1984. You can see among Nigerians the starvation, the killings, the bloodlettings, the insurgency. Well, all Kola, these are the campaigns. Well, Kola, I will have to let you go at this point. So <laughs> you don't even need to put a voice to it. I will have to let you go at this point. Thank you thank very, you very much, much for coming to the morning show. Uh, thank you. I'm sure we'll be talking to you again thank as you we move much. closer to the elections in 2019. Well, that brings us to the end of the morning show thank today. Thank you for watching.